If you don't want to smell like every other guy on the street, one of the best things you can do is get into smaller, more niche, independent fragrance brands. I'm Justin Fenner, Senior Editor at Rob Report, and in this video, I'm going to share five of my favorite fragrances from indie-ish brands, plus the one I'm going to be wearing all summer. Welcome to Uncommon Sense, our series on everyone's favorite personal luxury, fragrance. I've spent over a decade covering men's lifestyle and I've made it a personal mission to only recommend the best of the best. So let's get right into it. First up, Chris Collins' Tokyo Blue. If you don't know Chris Collins by name, you definitely know him by face. He spent decades as a model for Ralph Lauren and clearly spending so much time with the absolute master of lifestyle brands has rubbed off. Chris started his own eponymous fragrance brand in 2018, and it is so good that this year it became the first Black-owned fragrance brand stocked at Sephora. I like a lot of his fragrances. There are so many that smell so good, but Tokyo Blue stands out as an absolute favorite of mine. In fact, let's take a whiff of this. I just, I, I want to get the scent in my nose. This fragrance has top notes of Bergamo, Galbanum, and Alang Alang, middle notes of Violet Leaf, Orris, Orange Blossom, and Rose, and base notes of Cedarwood and Musk. Now, if you ask the Chris Collins brand, they will tell you that this fragrance was inspired by the Shibuya Blue Cave Illumination, which happens in Tokyo every December. Basically, they light up these trees with these really bright blue holiday lights at night. People can walk through them, you can take pictures. It is a really great like Instagram moment. I've never been personally, but the images and video that I've seen of it are absolutely stunning. It is also something of a tribute to Chris Collins' father, who is said to have liked violet fragrances. And violets are a prominent ingredient in a surprising number of popular men's scents. Tom Ford's Black Violet obviously has some violets in it. Same for Calvin Klein Mann and of course, Jeffrey Bean's iconic gray flannel. The violet, I think, is what gives Tokyo Blue what I'm gonna call a sort of barbershop quality, but like a chic barbershop. A barbershop where you're gonna play with your platinum card, not a fistful of cash. It's really powdery and gentlemanly right from the start. And what it reminds me of is going to get a hot towel shave. It is luxurious and comforting in a really similar way. And this cannot be overstated. This is not an eau de cologne. This is not an eau de parfum. It is an extrait de parfum, which means it has a much higher percentage of actual fragrance oil in it than other kinds of fragrance. That means it smells really good for a really long time, truly in all day wear situation. And with something that smells as good as this fragrance, that is exactly what you want. Next up, Killian's Le Vert. Killian Hennessy, you know, of the Hennessy's. Honestly, one of the greatest living minds in fragrance. I'm calling this video indie-ish because about five years ago, his brand was acquired by Estee Lauder, but for a long time, it was totally independent. And even though it's owned by one of the biggest powerhouses in the luxury world right now, I think the company still retains a lot of that indie spirit. I love how playful and imaginative his concepts are, and he's honestly just really talented at making a great fragrance. Case in point, he's got this booze-inspired line where the bottles sort of look like crystal rocks glasses. This one is Le Revert, and honestly, it smells like you're drinking absinthe. This fragrance has a top note of absinthe, middle notes of violet leaf and licorice heart, and base notes of patchouli, vetiver, and sandalwood. So Le Revert is sort of the French equivalent of happy hour, and it gets its name from the fact that this is traditionally when you would drink absinthe. Absinthe, of course, is the very green wormwood infused liquor that people said for a long time made you see green fairies because of its alleged psychoactive properties. Of course, we know now that it is just very high in alcohol and some of its early proponents were hard drinking poets who would have made really good marketing copywriters. It does not make you hallucinate, it, ju it just gets you drunk. Appropriately, this fragrance does evoke the feeling of being in a bar. When it opens, you get this licorice anise hit and it does feel like you're nosing a glass of absinthe. And just like Tokyo Blue, the violet in it gives it this gentlemanly quality. When it dries down, I think the patchouli is pretty dominant. So you've gotta be a patchouli person if you are going to go the distance with this one. I like it, I like it a lot, but it is something to be mindful of. I find that I can get almost a full day of wear out of it before I can start to smell my skin again, but the silage is only moderate at best. 
So it makes it a really great thing to wear if you think you might be letting someone get close to you. Next up, Misfit by Arkeist. Arkeist is a New York-based brand led by the architect and businessman Carlos Hubert. It's really hard to pick just one favorite Arkeist fragrance. I really like Sydney Rockpool too. So much of what this brand does is so good, but this one, which is called Mistfit, is certifiably excellent. In 2021, it was named the Fragrance Foundation's Independent Fragrance of the Year for a number of reasons. Primarily, though, it smells so good. This fragrance has top notes of bergamot, angelica root, and French lavender, middle notes of Bulgarian rose, ambrette seeds, and akigala wood, and base notes of patchouli and tonka bean. It gives you this sort of like Christmassy feeling. It is warm and comforting, and I find it just really round and enveloping. It's sort of like, it's a warm hug, and that's the point. There's a really beautiful sort of mythology behind this fragrance. Imagine we are in France, in Marseille, at the end of the 1800s. We're at a time when people with money have largely abandoned cashmere shawls because they've become more affordable for a bigger group of people, for misfits. So they're casting off their cashmere shawls because they don't want to look poor and they end up looking dumb because now they're just cold. I think ultimately un everyone understands on a chilly day, there is nothing better than wrapping yourself in cashmere. I'm wearing cashmere, right? It's cold. It's, it's you know, you wanna feel warm and enveloped on a day when it's chilly. And this fragrance smells how that feeling feels. You feel wrapped up in it in a really pleasing way. This fragrance starts off sweet, spicy, at the beginning, there's something for me that's almost a little bit reminiscent of the holidays. It's not piney though, it's more like warm spices and, and holiday cookies, but then it deepens into this warmer, rounder smell. It has this really alluring amber quality. It feels comforting and cozy, and it gives me the feeling of safety and security. This is an eau de parfum. It's got some longevity to it, honestly, I can spray this on in the morning and still notice it well into the afternoon. But this fragrance is going to be good on those spring evenings when it's still a little chilly, maybe a little rainy, maybe a little misty outside, and you feel like you need something to just warm you up. Plus, if you get it now, you won't need to get it in the fall. Next up, DS and Durga's Mississippi Medicine. DS and Durga is a Brooklyn-based fragrance house. Honestly, probably one of the coolest names in the game right now. Their fragrance have this presence and this personality about them that I think a lot of other indie fragrance brands really struggle to capture. But they are so good at world building and storytelling that every time I put on one of their scents, I feel like I'm being taken on the trip of a lifetime. That is especially true of this fragrance, Mississippi Medicine. This fragrance has top notes of red cedar and frankincense, middle notes of cypress root, black pine, and cascarilla bark, and base notes of incense, Spanish cade, and birch tar. The reason this fragrance is called Mississippi Medicine, I love this story. It is named after the Mississippi death cult of the 13th century. I am going to give you a gift and let you Google that for yourself because it is absolutely as fascinating and death metal as it sounds. But one of the assumptions that historians make, and one of the assumptions that D.S. and Durga made in creating this fragrance is that this cult found cedar to be sacred, sort of a portal between this world and the next. Understandably, cedar plays a really big role here, and it's the scent that you get as soon as you spray it on. Some of the reviews of this fragrance make it seem like you're going to be in this like mystical pine forest. That is not where I go. I am somewhere between like a grassy field on the edge of the woods and the finest antique bookstore you can possibly imagine. It has a slightly dusty quality for me. And unlike some of the other scents in this video, it is forthrightly masculine. It smells like a guy with a beard who is subscribed to new arrival alerts from the Argosy bookstore. 
you can Google that one too. And even though I find it a little more green than Woody, it gets decent scores for both Silage and Longevity. One of the reasons this sticks out for me is because a few jobs ago, I had a coworker who wore it. And of course, he had an amazing beard and always had the sharpest book recommendations. Now, before I get into my current favorite indie fragrance, I have a small favor to ask. If you've liked this video so far, give us a like and tell me about your favorite independent fragrance brand down in the comments. Finally, Kriegler Silt Style 2202. If you don't know about Kriegler, I am so excited to let you in on one of the finest stories in the fragrance business. This brand has existed in its current form since 1904. And over the last 120 years or so, they have made fragrances for probably every president and king you can think of, and also people who just really like fragrance. So from Justin Fenner to JFK, it really runs the gamut. They've got a lot of older historic fragrances. I think there are over like 600 fragrances in their vault that they can sort of produce at the drop of a hat. But one that I wanna talk about today is relatively new. This is Silt Style 2202, just introduced last summer. This fragrance has top notes of pink pepper, almond, and orange middle notes of ginger, hazelnut, and chipriol, and base notes of vanilla, tree moss, and amber. This fragrance was named after the German island of Silt in the North Sea. Think of it as like the Martha's Vineyard of Germany, right? It's not the Hamptons, it's a little more stately, but also somewhat a little more laid back at the same time. And frankly, it does smell like being on vacation. You get the freshness of the orange and the pepper, and those marry really nicely with the ginger and the vanilla. The thing I get the most is this really ambery quality. It serves as a really interesting and grounding backdrop for some of the other lighter, fresher ingredients. The thing I love about Kriegler fragrances is that they have this tendency to reveal themselves to you in stages, not only to you, but the people around you. So you're gonna get this bright burst of these really sparkling notes up top, but not everyone around you is going to know that you're wearing this super exclusive fragrance. This is very personal, very intimate. It doesn't have a huge silage, but I have found the longevity to be moderate, and I really enjoy the way it develops over the course of the day. And I really enjoy the way it dries down into those comforting ambery and vanilla notes. One of the interesting things about this fragrance is that after it's blended, they leave it to age for three years before they bottle it. It's sort of like making wine, and that naturally means the production is pretty limited. Kriegler says they only produce 1,400 bottles of the scent every year. If you're not one of the lucky few who's already got it, but you've got the patience to put your name on the waiting list, it is worth it. So, those are my five favorite luxury fragrances from indie-ish brands right now. Although knowing me, my opinion is probably going to change. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Rob Report channel. You'll get a notification for the next one. We'll see you next time with more of the best of the best.